of RuPaul's Drag Race. America's next drag superstar is... That's right, kitty girls. Welcome back to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time Season 14 for us, Episode 5, where we are going to quickly recap and discuss the Ross Matthews Roast Catwalk Reunited and, as you heard, the grand finale. And for those mm. of you that don't know who we are, my name is Gary. With me is my ever fabulous co host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. Yes, and it is Sunday, April 24, 2022. And it is not even 48 hours yet since the crowning announcement of who won this season. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to go through our usual kind of stuff. Uh, and it's going to be interesting because this is the first season where we've done multiple episodes at a time. Mm -hmm. And we had intended a week ago to do episodes 13, 14, 15. And then today would have been dedicated to the finale. However, the drag gods have a feud <laughs> with the tech gods. And uh -huh. they took possession of David's laptop and fucked it all up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, y'all... Um, Oh, she got to she got to take a I sip said, of wine to tell I the story. Sip of that sip. So, here I am, all pumped and ready for the weekend. I was like, "Here comes the show. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that." I had plans. I had I had to use my laptop on Saturday. I was gonna have I had a meeting on Saturday that was over Zoom. All this shit was all like, "Okay, cool, let's do it." Friday morning, everything's fine, all good. Friday evening. I open my laptop, mm -hmm. or maybe it was Thursday evening, whatever, one of the days. Open my laptop. Nothing, like, nothing's working. It's not, no screen, the screen's not working, nothing's happening. Mm. I'm like, okay, sure, I, this has happened before. It had happened before. And I was like, no problem. I'll just hold down the power button, mm -hmm. wait a little bit, and it'll, you know, it'll reboot and all that shit, and it'll be fine. Nope. Mm -mm, that didn't happen. Nothing happened. Kept hitting the buttons, frantically looking online for shit to figure out how it was going on. Maybe it's just because it, it was in sleep mode, so maybe it's just something along those lines, figuring all this shit out. Nope, 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 no. Nothing's happening. Nothing's working. All the things that tell you what to do in regards to fixing the issue have happened when the laptop's actually on. So <laughs> I couldn't get it to work. So um, disheartened, um, pissed. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, I made a jaunt to, I had, I decided and I talked with friends about it and the laptop was old. It was six, seven years old, give or take, you know, some months. Okay. So it was a little old, but it wasn't like running slow, none of that shit. So it just, right. it's kind of more annoying than anything else. Um, but I took a jaunt to, to the local, uh, micro center, computer area store mm -hmm. um, a friend recommended this one that i'm using now um it was a lot more than i was planning to spend on a laptop but it was it's good it's powerful it's fast um they were also able to pull the files from my old laptop and put them in here so i have everything okay. um and here we are here we are um <laughs> Uh, there are a few, there have been a few little bumps here and there, but nothing too major. The biggest one bump being is I now only have two, um, uh, USB ports as opposed to the three that I had on the old laptop. Mm -hmm. So I have, uh, fortunately, again, fortunately, I already had bought a little extender that had like, has four USBs on it already. So I can just plop those little buffers in. So, Yeah. And here we are. So, uh, yes, the, the reason for that explanation, dear listeners and viewers, is because we had planned, like I said, to do a show a week ago. And we were just mm -hmm. going to recap the three shows that led into the finale. We were going to speculate about the winner. 
And then that did not work out, and that's okay. So here we are, and um, for those that were patrons, they got to listen to us like have a quick discussion about do we do we reveal the winner at the very top or not, or try to play it off like we don't know. Um, but the reality is, we're not going to break down each individual episode. So there now we all know who the winner is, uh, and we'll probably talk more about that as we go along. That being said, do you want to um, jump in to our sure? Our let's do it. Okay. Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. Yes, hunty. So put the pedal to the metal. This is where we talk about our overall thoughts. Um, any serves, swerves, or nerves that occurred in these particular episodes. Uh, <laughs> it appears, you, David, you and I kind of have very similar <laughs> yeah. of thought about like the, the, these four <laughs> cumulatively. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'll kind of I'll bump it into it really quickly. Um and I wrote down, and suddenly, finale. Like, here we are. Um, what was it? The last time we recorded, they had just saved another queen. Mm-hmm. Another queen. And we still had, like, seven motherfucking queens in this show. And we are... We know we knew when the finale was being recorded. We, we all knew that. It was around the week of April 6th. So here we were. Like, okay, so what's going to happen? Are they going to have another episode? Are they going to have another, um, like, what, what's going on? Right. So, well, um, as if they were reading our minds, like, this is taking really long time. This season is taking so fucking long. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Um, they decided in the... Roast episode. Yeah, let me look at my notes again. Pardon me. Yes. Literally in the roast episode, not one queen got eliminated, but two. Mm-hmm. Two got sent home, Georges and, and um, Di, uh, Deja. Um, two queens got sent home. There was a bottom three, and two of them got sent home. Mm-hmm. Bye. So now we have five. Mm-hmm. Seven to five in like one episode. Right, which That's... which in theory put us back on track. Yeah. Because we had speculated back... based on past history, we'd have four mm-hmm. in the finale. So at the end of episode 13, we had five. We're like, okay, got it, girl. One more to go in episode 14. We'll have a top four. We'll have a reunion. We'll have a finale. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Chalizel Schmazel. And then, you yeah. know, that'll be it. Yeah, that's what we thought. Again, that's what we thought. But if season 14 has done anything, listen up, listen up, girlfriends, okay? If season 14 did anything, it did the one thing that we have been bitching about for the probably past five seasons, which is change it up. We we were getting very tired of the formulaic mm-hmm. like production aspect, that it was predictable as to what episodes were going to occur, how things were going to play out. Mm-hmm. And so this season, I didn't li- think about listing it, but I think we had probably uh, somewhere between a half dozen and a dozen new elements or things that had never occurred before. Fair. And lo yeah. and behold, a top five is one of them. Yes. And yeah, then the so here, format of the finale is another one. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it was all this stuff, and then so like we just you know kind of said, we're in five. We got five. They do the classic um, Rue video, you know, performance kind of thing. Um, we get a bottom two, and then none of them go home, which is sounding very familiar. Mm-hmm. But this is different because it's top five, but all five are going to the finale. Right, which unless you had been to the finale taping or had been spoiled online because mm-hmm. someone broke an NDA or something, like you wouldn't know how the finale was going to play out. Even I was like, Okay, so normally it's like a whole like lip sync against lip sync and you like and I was like, how are they gonna do this like with five? Like like what kind of roulette whatever thing are we gonna play to make this thing work? Mm-hmm. And we know they had a formula potentially to do it. They just did it in the Lala Perusa. Right. You pick one and then 
yada, 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 like but process the, of elimination. Right. But the issue with that is like how many numbers, how many outfits, like how many rounds, like, girl, like, um, because wasn't it just last season? Like how many outfits did those queens have to have ready for just the four, finale if alone? Not four. Right. Plus. Five, no. Six. Because there were the three runways. Because they did red, like red and white and, you know, black and white and red all over. Right. They did, So they did the ball kind of thing where they had three looks. Mm-hmm. Then, then there's the whatever outfit you wore for the um, lip syncs because they did a, the four way lip sync thing. Mm-hmm. Was, there a fina- was there a final outfit? No. They just wore what they wore. You know, but if you won the lip sync, your lip sync, mm-hmm. you had to wear another outfit. one more outfit. So there we go. That's why I was like, there's, there's got to be more. And more. you had a runway, like, or mm-hmm. the actual, sorry, you had the carpet uh-huh. before the whole yeah. event. So that's at least six. Yeah. If not, like, another outfit for before or after. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you were you were looking at a, at a lot of outfits, and I think this time it was less um, for them the way they formulated it. But yes, absolutely. So yeah, we went from seven to five to five and one. Yeah, well, two and then one. Well, true. <laughs> I'm thinking at the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> right at the end. So yeah, I just it was. I agree. It was very different. It was, pre- but it wasn't as awful as I. It was still a little predictable ish mm-hmm. um but overall i i will admit i kind of enjoyed it i enjoyed the individual numbers um kind of going back to some of the things they used to do mm-hmm. uh, where the queens got to sign individually as opposed to here we are in a lip sync yada 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 where you're kind of you know duking it out with another queen um to win but it wasn't it was it was good. It wasn't like I, I wasn't jaw dropped amazing. There were some funny moments, some fun moments and what have you during the songs. And overall it was pretty good. But I think it was it could have been elevated somewhat. Mm. The songs I will admit were very good towards the Queens. Um they were very good and individualized for the most part. Um I think this is gonna sound awful. No, no, it's not. I think um, Bosco's and Daya's could have potentially been done by anybody. Mm. Like okay. it was, they weren't as um, personalized as the other ones to me, um, and 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 in a, in a way. Um, even Willows a little bit. Um, although they mentioned like the bathroom, the bathtub and the, the, the right. meatball thing. So toaster, toaster, and meatball, you know, that, so maybe not so much, but that's to an extent potentially. Anyway. That's fair. Yeah. Um, uh, regards to any serves, swerves and nerves. Um, I'll talk about one of the nerves later. Okay. Uh, but I will call out because I had it marked. Where did it go? Oh, yes. The um ba 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 ba. Um so during the reunion, um, there was a lot of nerve. And I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna say it now. Jasmine Kennedy. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you some nerve, girl. And and even, yeah, our yeah, because I was genuine. Like you had. There's this call out in regards to Clash of the Queens. So that was this thing that they were doing during the reunion, mm-hmm. and Jasmine was kind of a part of a lot of them. But. They talked about Jasmine and Daya's kind of feud, Mm -hmm. and it erupted during the reunion. They had this moment where they haven't talked, they say they haven't talked to each other since the show, and blah, blah, blah. And there's like, I don't know you. And it became this very 
intense moment. Like, I don't know about you. I was. I don't know about you, but when I was watching the reunion, I thought Daya was going to walk off stage. Like she was. She was there, mm. and she was having this. Like you could see it in her face. Um, she was obviously emotional. She was feeling this. Like feeling this moment, and her. I could feel her leg. Like you could see her leg shaking, and I was like. I think she's gonna do it. I think she's gonna walk off stage. I think she is, because it was a, it was kind of, Jasmine was kind of attacking in a sense. Mm. Uh, was it was it justified, kind of, but it was very much this moment of like, ooh, girl, like we're gonna call you out right now, because we apparently have not had an opportunity to talk about this um, at all, and here we are at the reunion, so let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> hmm. I see your face. I see your face, girl. <laughs> I have thoughts about that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, there was that. Uh, that's kind of me. That's kind of it for me. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, like you, I was like, that was fast. Like mm-hmm. suddenly, it's at the it's it's the end. Like, girl, this season, this is this is a horrible analogy, but it reminded me of a pregnancy. It was like, baby, this is going to take a long time. This is the season that will never end. It will break records. It will have the most episodes ever. We are never getting done with this. Like, I heard people make jokes all the time about, you know, we would get to, like, the top four or whatever. We'd be like, yeah, everybody come back. Start all over again. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, some kind of craziness. Um, so, like, I agree with you. You know, it's like we had seven, then we had five, then we had five. And then, you know, we get to the finale and they and they did change some things up. Um, so in regards to the finale, uh, I was disappointed that all of the girls songs were super short, like so fast. And 90 seconds, probably. Um, I my understanding from listening to another podcast earlier today is that they were like a minute and five seconds or a minute mm. and ten seconds. Like it was redunculous how quickly they went. And. I was disappointed a little bit in in some of what the queens were doing, and I don't know how much of it was, I don't want to say manufactured, how much of it was controlled by mm-hmm. production as in terms of what they could do and what they couldn't do. I don't know if they've learned from past finales that some things are absolutely off limits. Um, do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like things that could cause yeah. a mess or, you know, create, you know, a, a hazard, a safety issue. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like... So that was one of the things I kind of wondered about. I also found it intriguing that you went into the finale with a top five and they were all going to do a number. Now, my understanding is that Leland wrote all the songs, um, okay. which is interesting because it, it means they only paid for one song's rights. Instead of the whole like spin the wheel, open a brief case, oh, okay. magic True. big box bullshit. And then yeah. you have to like pick amongst all these different artists. So I don't know if the five of them were told what the finale song was, or if they were given like maybe three songs to prepare for. And then mm-hmm. you had to make whatever you were bringing work for all three songs. Like mm-hmm. this is all speculation. Um, so I'm not really sure how all of that played out, but it was interesting, but I was disappointed that they were like done and over really super fast. Um, and I also felt in watching the five, I knew immediately who the top two were, and I had a I had a real funny feeling I knew who was going to win. Like it just seemed mm. to play out that who was going to win was going to win, and they did. So like it, it's really interesting to me knowing now who has won. If, yeah. Like. Like, if production was trying so hard to make it seem like any of them could have won, when in reality, it was, to me, like, really obvious that only two of them were going to be in the at the very end to do the lip sync. 
And if, mm-hmm. if the any of the other three were going to take that one spot against Willow or take away Camden's spot, like, something was going to have to happen. Somebody has to fuck up. Somebody has to blow us away. Like, the, like you have to switch the whole thing in order mm-hmm. to get that math to work out differently. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, I, I found that really um, interesting in terms of that. And then um, – there's been already been some chatter about the la- about the last number, the lip sync, and how Lady and Willow were kind of in such sync, like mm-hmm. especially the very last third of the song, like after the reveals, um, they were very cordial about their space with each other. They did certain mm-hmm. moves together. Um, the very end down the runway was almost like it was choreographed together. Like it was, Mm. it was very Thelma and Louise for me. I was like, when I saw it, I was like, what is this that's going on here on this day? (laughs) I was like, this all seems not going on here on this day. Right. It was, didn't seem planned. Yeah. But it also didn't seem impromptu. So it made me wonder if once they knew they were winning, like that they were the final two, I wonder if they had a talk backstage, like knowing what the song was going to be, if they said to each other, like, you know, could is there any way we can kind of make this work and really be supportive of each other? Like, you know, sisterhood type. Yeah. Stuff. I don't know. Like, so. Yeah. So that so, was kind of a, a whole thing. Yeah. Agreed. I think it was it's very interesting because, you know, we've we've been doing this for a while and Drag Race has been doing it for a bit longer. And there is something we, we've learned over the years is that there's a lot of production and producing going on mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing, both with not just the production team and production staff and RuPaul and all of them, but we know that the queens are doing editing of themselves in some way, shape, or form for one reason or another. Either it's to not necessarily look like... Um, to not look bad in front of people um i'm gonna call it out i believe like utico is a perfect example of that you know her whole like i don't want to wear an afro because i don't want to offend anyone i'm like okay whatever queen okay but like there are we know that there are factors at play outside of the game now because um perception is key perception is is very important Mm -hmm. into the long run of your if you win or however, you know, it, it's part of how things move forward for you as a queen. Um, so I see that. And then you're kind of, as you were talking, I was kind of like, yeah, there's, it feels like it could have been impromptu, but it wasn't, but maybe it was, it's kind of in that middle really gray area of like, we know this is the end we know one of us will get at least fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Like maybe play it and made a base person win kind of thing. Um, maybe they knew what they were wearing. Maybe they knew how things were going to go because they they were very very complimentary to each other. If you look at things, mm-hmm. um, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think red and purple are complimentary colors. No. Thank you. It's yellow and purple. Sorry. <laughs> that was my head. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, so it's it's, it's it it would have been it was it's, it's interesting. I don't know. You know, the part of me that's sitting there like, could there have been a conversation? Absolutely. We know they had a little time after they were announced mm-hmm. before they and then they had to get rest and ready and they had the whole you know number to go through the queens doing the drag race live queens doing their number and all that shit. So they had plenty of time. Right. Um, so who knows? Right. Who knows? Um, I will also kind of add, I'm curious if there were any changes done in regards to like, you're talking about, um, uh, you know, how they were doing the show, like reveals and all that stuff. I wonder if there was anything different because it was Las Vegas and it was the uh, Flamingo um, stage. And it was mm-hmm. the stage that they use practically probably every day for the um, RuPaul's Drag Race live show. Right, because while there is a money-saving effect of not renting a theater in L.A., 
Mm-hmm. They don't own the fl- the theater at Flamingo that they're doing the show out of, but they basically have their own host facility, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, like, I, I wasn't surprised to hear that it was going to be at the Flamingo, and I was like, well, that makes the little things a little bit easier, but also there's a money loss effect because they had to shut down the regular live show in order mm-hmm. to film the finale. So, in theory, they lost three or four days of regular shows, presumably. Mm-hmm. Um, but so but I don't could have I, potentially gained it because of the audience that was coming to see the finale. Correct. So it, it's kind of a, a mixed thing. But um, in terms of like serves, swerves, and nerves, I do want to give a serve to Miss Angeria for her look um, at the the finale oh. when she showed up. Because baby, if there's ever a time to pull the Vegas like showgirl, all the plumage, everything in the world, that is the time to do it. And mm. I'm not going to call it a nerve because it didn't blow me away. But at the same time, I was like, props to you, mama, for putting mm-hmm. on like 100 pounds and like of this outfit, you know, that is the one thing that bothered me a little bit about these last looks um, is that I felt like the girls were doing looks and not thinking about the practicality of walking in them. <laughs> it bothered me just a tiny bit because I was like, what is going up in here? Like, girl, this is not a photo shoot. You are not just standing still for a camera. You literally have to walk and mm-hmm. walk back and like, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, that was the only thing that kind of I love that. a little bit. Yeah, I love that Angeria is like really awkward. Once she got to the like front of the stage and she's kind of standing there. She had to literally make this awkward like 360 degrees. <laughs> yeah, she's like, like, let me just like pivot and try to like not knock people over an audience and yes you know um, bosco when bosco walked down um mm-hmm. one of the wings was a little droopy like it was obvious yes. that it was like you know this this you know apparatus deal or harness type deal but at the same time i was like i'm not sure what's going on up here in this day that like these things aren't looking now Algeria's look perfectly balanced to me for the most part bosco's on the other hand i'm not sure what the, the yeah was there they might have just been a heaviness or something maybe something came undone and there was no time to fix it you know maybe yeah so um but yeah i mean i I thought that 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 stuff was good uh deja sky apparently pulled a miscongeniality reference um i haven't seen the movie but i recognized the outfit in a really weird way i was like this actually what it made me think of was priscilla queen of the desert Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit. It made me think of those like emu ostrich, like outfit numbers. Um, probably just because Same. of the, like the big you know feather tail or whatever. So I thought that that was, um, that that was interesting. I mean you know like Georges was in crystals and you know looking like a chandelier and not much else. Um, and I know I, that's no shade. I'm just kind of like you know, um, yeah. I mean like everyone everyone looked really good. Girl, don't be. T- it's not. Baby, it's fact. Okay. It's not shade. <laughs> That'd be tea I'm serving. Anyways, um, yeah. So I mean, I think I think overall it looked good. Uh, so before I jump into your comments about the reunion, one thing I did happen to notice today and watching and rewatching a little bit of the finale, um, Carson and Ross were missing. That's right. So I'm not sure what that story was about. Like, usually the whole family's here. Mm-hmm. Which means that it would be Michelle, Ross, and Carson, like in the audience. But Michelle was the only one that was like shown to be there, which I found interesting. So I don't know if they were already booked with other gigs, or if it's a smaller theater and there's only so many seats. And they were like, "All right, listen, kids, like we can't have everybody in the world turning out." Um, yeah. I do think it is a much smaller theater because I started paying attention, and there wasn't that many familiar faces in the crowd. Um, yeah, in terms of like drag royalty quote-unquote from the rue family over all these seasons i found yeah, that so, interesting so if you've ever been to vegas and you've ever seen any of their shows usually i mean unless it's like the big ones like mm-hmm. any of the like cirque du soleil may they rest in peace um kind of shows you're usually in like your the theater is like part of the hotel and depending on the size of the hotel the theater can be quite big mm-hmm. Um, uh, to kind of do a couple of comparisons, Jim and I saw at one of the shows, we saw the, um, the divas, 
live, like the Divas performance, you know, the, I forget his name, Frank Marino. Mm -hmm. So the ones they do a lot of female, they do a lot of celebrity impersonators and it was pretty decent. But if you look back, it wasn't a big like state. It wasn't a big audience, maybe 300, 400 people, Mm -hmm. something along those lines. Um, that's how I kind of feel about this state. I haven't seen it personally. Um, I don't know if I wanted to try to see the Drag Race Live show um, before everything before it goes away. I know it will be eventually going away. Um, I don't think I'm going to get an opportunity to do so to get back to Vegas and see it. Mm. Uh, it was it's funny. 2020. It was one of our thoughts to like go and to Vegas and do all that. Mm. That's not gonna. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. But anyway. Um, I don't recall the space being big. If I when I was looking at tickets, like for the RuPaul's Drag Race live show, mm-hmm. and they may have done some things to kind of fill out the seats, you know, because some of it is tables and such. But who knows? Yeah, no, I so I thought that um, just pretty interesting as a side note that um, two of the main judges like are, were mm-hmm. not there. Um, I noticed that too. So uh, regarding the reunion and your thoughts about Miss Jasmine, uh, Jasmine and Daya uh-huh. specifically, um, honestly, when I was watching it, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. This reminds me of like the drama that you get in reunion shows, not drag race reunion drama. I mean, we've had some of that, but it definitely echoed into this. I felt like we were really production wise, heavily playing into the whole like, this is what you tuned in for kind of thing. Hence, it was like the Clash of the Queens. After the third <laughs> reference, I was like, oh, for the love of everything, can we please move on away from this shit because it's tired and it's old? <laughs> but no, we were not because that was the theme of the reunion. That's what the production wanted to focus on. Um, in terms of, like, Daya getting upset and then walking off, I never thought she was going to walk off because she was not she was not at a convenient place of seating to easily get away. She was sur- kind yeah. of surrounded Jasmine, Fair. on the other hand, being on the end, she could have easily just boop, like disappeared, stormed off and yeah. off stage. But she wasn't going to do that, um, no, because she is a you know a a, a verbal fighter. She's a debater, um, mm-hmm. and she stands her ground. So I, I mean, I think one of the things that Dio was trying to express that a lot of the queens were being supportive of is the difficulty of doing this show and having the public have an opinion about you and mm-hmm. how they how they perceive what they see on television as a 360 composite of who you are of a, mm-hmm. as a person and i think the difficulty is is that dia like willow was claimed to be the most strategic bitch in the history of the series and i don't disagree with that um, she was incredibly stealth about how she operated through the season. Mm-hmm. And I think that was very smart and it played well to her. And then she won. Um, I think Daya was a piece of that, but Daya is very outspoken. Like she doesn't hold things to herself, which I think if she had, then people would have called her conniving. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I don't think there was no way really kind of for her to win. So the fact that there was this whole like, rah, 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 you know, kind of thing in the read, you know, I was kind of like, eh. I, because part of me was like, both of you are adults, both of you are big girls, Daya's going to be fine. Jasmine's mm. probably going to be the one that is butthurt. She'll be the one that holds the grudge. She'll be the one that constantly brings up, like, you never talk to me. What I was a proud of is that Daya clapped back and was like, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. You don't get to do that narrative. You don't get to put that out there that we never talk. I gave you an opportunity to talk and you didn't answer. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 if anything, it takes two, sweetheart. You don't, you don't get to get away with saying, acting like I ignored your ass and I wanted nothing to do with you, and you save it up for the reunion. That's not how this plays. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I appreciated that. Um, but yeah, it, there was definitely some tenseness in terms of the reunion. I don't know if Daya would have walked off. It's interesting you were talking about her shaking leg because I didn't notice that. But then when mm-hmm. you said it, I was like, girl, it could have been the beatus. It could have been the sugars, <laughs> like, for all we know. You know, yeah, I don't know. One it would very... presume that she still had her pump on her in that outfit, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, if it's on, depending on what side it was on, it could have been on that one side that had the big old long drapey permit. Anyway, sorry. So, no, I mean, I, I think that, um, and honestly, I thought she looked fucking stunning. God, in the yes. reunion. I was like, holy shit. And actually, the more I thought about it, now that the season's over, I'm going to call it officially. I think Daya is the new Raven. 
Mm. I think she is a queen who speaks her mind, who has no problem popping off because she's mm-hmm. sound and and concrete in her thoughts and processes. And yeah. like people have opinions about Raven, but my feeling on it is like, baby, we love a villain. We like somebody who is an antagonist, who like pokes the bear, who mm-hmm. claps back, who says these things. I mean, look at Bosco. Talk about the shadiest bitch of the season. She had something to say about everybody and it wasn't nice. But everybody was like appreciative of it because, you know, she she wasn't mean, but she wasn't a Bianca Del Rio that was always kind of d- deliberate in humor. Like, you know, so I, fi- I find that really interesting the way these like personalities and things came out. And ultimately, in the end, I'm like, it's fine. It's perfectly yeah. fine the way it is. Now, I did hear something that I had not considered before was, I guess, the crazy similarities of how this season has compared to season 11. Is that right? Um, who who won in season 11? Was that EB's season? Give me a second. Yes, I think so. Okay. Anyways, it's EV season because, if I'm not mistaken, EV season is the same season that Brooklyn Heights perf- was a competitor in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the comment was, look at what happened. A, ba- a pro- trained professional ballerina not from this country makes it to the finale of a freak, quote unquote, like weird queen, alternative queen, makes it to the finale. And guess who won? Mm. the alternative queen so when someone brought that up i was like what and i was like oh that is pretty wild and then of course the joke is so does that mean that lady camden is going to become the new host of drag race uk (laughs) which i'm like okay i'm not i'm not you know i don't have a problem with that i'm sure camden wouldn't either if it got coin pay the girl Uh uh-huh so yeah i mean the whole point of this is, is like, before we do it, bam, we were here and it's over and uh, 16 episodes, bing, bang, boom. Uh, it felt like it was going to take forever. And then all of a sudden it was kind of like, um, and it, was, we're it was here. Yeah, it was really strange. It was kind of like we weren't in control and we got edged for quite a while and we got really frustrated with it for a moment. And then all of a sudden uh-huh. it, it was kind of like, oh, and you're done. Super release. <laughs> and then we're done. <laughs> it was like. It, yeah, <laughs> it was a very, it was, so it was one of those, like, super long, slow, edgy moments, and then, okay, now I'm ready for you to do it, and I'm just gonna go, wong and <laughs> boom! <laughs> for those of you that didn't see the visual of that, you can just imagine the motion that was made to go with uh-huh. it. All right, you ready to move on to our next segment? Yes, let's. Okay. All right, hunties, it's time for snaps and eye rolls, aka the hits and the misses, or the highs and the lows of these particular episodes. Uh, so starting off with the snaps, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? Oh my God. Okay. So I am giving snaps to one of the best reads ever mm-hmm. that was done during the reunion. Okay. So if you don't know, so if you watch the reunion, you know that the queens that did the reading were the, they said were the queens that had been, who didn't get a chance to do it because they weren't on the show. So mm-hmm. they had already been eliminated. So we're talking Cornbread, Orion, June, and Maddie. Maddie. Yeah. And Maddie. Oh, and um, um, Alyssa Hunter. Don't want to forget Alyssa. By the way, Alyssa Hunter. Sorry. I'm going to – I forget to do this. Another thing. Sorry. Alyssa Hunter. Bitch. Who – what – who – how are you making this coin to get these outfits made? And doing this shit, cause mama, that that is that is fierce. Well, Every... she is unofficially the trade of the season. Yes, whatever. Um, but it was just one of these moments. I was just like, damn, she looks great. And then we saw all of her. Uh, if you've watched like Bussy Queen or anything like that, or seen, just follow her on 
uh, fucking Twitter, um, probably Instagram too. Like her looks, like the ones that she didn't get a chance to wear, everything that she has done has been amazing. Mm -hmm. I am God smacked. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, sorry. So here we are, back to the snaps. <laughs> um, Maddie gave some very interesting reads during her moment. But her best read, and one of the best reads I've ever had, was after Orion did crashed and burned with her read against Cornbread. Orion said, and I quote, because I wrote it down, um, how your last name going to be story and you can't read? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Just amazing. And and she's right. I mean, Orion was awful. Um, although apparently, according to her, like a lot of stuff that she said and done did had gotten edited and removed. It wasn't used, but whatever. Um, we all say that. Blame it on the edit. Um, so yeah. But I am giving my snaps to that because it was the it caught me completely off guard wasn't expecting it and it, it was it was it was just beautiful beautiful in that moment yes because mm -hmm. you were trying to knock this another girl ground with this and you were kind of making a fat joke but um then you're like oh couldn't get it out because it was too long and too lengthy and you couldn't do it you couldn't say it so and I love how Rue was like, you want to do that again? She's like, I'm good. I said, yeah, you, you, you better be good. It's the best thing she said the whole reunion. I'm just saying. Just, just, just saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So that's my, that's my snaps. That's what okay. I'm going to say. Um, so I said, stunting us all. This is from the finale. There is one queen who reigned supreme in my estimation, and it was not someone from this season. Oh. And I have just one thing to say about it. Don't let the smooth taste fool you, baby. Oh, yeah. Do you ever want to talk about a queen that showed up all the other queens? <laughs> Baby, Simone Bear. comes out. And I was living. I was like, yes! Let's hear it. I was like, talk about an epitome of black girl realness on the stage, in the finale. And I was like, Look at her, all that hair, that white top, those jeans. Like, I was like, talk about the biggest balls in the world to show up on the stage for her step aside, for crowning the new winner. And she's like, oh, this? This, this is just, just something I put on. I mean, like, it's so crazy to me how fantastic she looked at a casual look for a gala event. I was like, man, that house, that house is some of the most artistic fuckers on the face of this planet turning out these things. And she comes stunting out and she's just like, I'm going to wear this. And it looked amazing. And it was amazing. I just, I am... Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I loved it. Don't, I, don't get me wrong. I love it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And it caught me off guard because I kind of like, that's right. This is Simone. Step down. Step aside. Okay. She, to me, is equivalent to the Violet Tchotchke appearance for her mm -hmm. step aside. Like, like, they are so vastly different. So crazy like in terms of like the execution and yet i think they are like on par with each other because it is not what is expected mm -hmm. like there is nothing quote unquote regal about what simone is wearing and yet it is everything is it, yeah right i mean it was just 
I was like, she deserved to win, and she is reminding us why she deserved to win, and that's what there is. I mean, like, you know, she, she to me, is, like, in a, like part of the Shea, like, world, the Shea Kool-Aid mm. world of, like, bringing black excellence to the art of drag in a heightened way to make you, like, think about, like, what it is. Um, even without doing anything specific, I think there was an interesting cultural context to what she was oh, doing. Oh, yeah in that moment to bring that forward to be, you know, and I was just kind of like, damn, damn, damn. I was like this, this queen, she's, she, she's, we are not worthy. So yes. Mm-hmm. That's why I was given snaps to like, I, I just, of all the things that like almost took my breath away, I was kind of like, okay. Yep. Like if she had showed up at, at any show doing like with that outfit, I would have been like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm poor. I ain't got no money to pay my bills. Cause I gave it all to you. Like, damn girl so uh moving on to i roll <laughs> sorry i just read what you wrote <laughs> okay girl who you giving eye rolls to <laughs> oh my god okay so the finale was very i mean the reunion and the finale i mean the reunion was very interesting because uh, they had these sec, they basically broke it down in a few segments, and one of the segments they mentioned was this like showmancy romance, like true romance, um, something along those lines. And they had these two moments where apparently there was Camgeria, which was um, Lady Camden and Angeria, this whole like showmancy moment. And then we go to Georges, and we talked to Georges, and apparently she had this showmance with Orion's story. Apparently, well, supposedly, the only thing they had to substantiate this, if I recall correctly, was Cornbread mm-hmm. saying that she spotted the way they behave, they the way those two were behaving in the van. Yeah, on the way to places and what have you. Right, and, and I was like. Okay, but you're the girl. only one talking, girl. Like, ain't nobody else on the whole stage Fact. affirming this right. story. So here we go. So that's my, like, showman's question marks. Because the the Cam Jury one, eh, like, maybe, possibly, because they, they do, they were very, you know, we saw them, like, kind of talking and all this stuff and, mm-hmm. Especially like right when they first got you know introduced, they had that whole like, let's go sit in a room and just talk to each other kind of thing, and and it did blossom into a more like friendship, affectionate kind of moment, you know, caring for each other. Care, it was a caring for each other kind of thing there. Right. I don't know if there was anything beyond that the reunion kind of indicates that maybe they're going to try to see if something will happen. I don't think it will, just to be blunt and honest, but... Never has there ever been, to my knowledge, a true romance out of any of the contestants. Like, yeah, there was Brooklyn and Angie, but I never saw that working anyways. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Vanjie. Um, like I just I mean I I just saw it as like, you know, yeah, they were very loving towards each other and there's nothing wrong with that. But I also given their personalities, I was like, Oh, I don't know if it's gonna work. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. So there was that and it it just feel it felt very forced on us. Yeah. For no reason whatsoever. Especially like more than one. If you had said like Kim Jiria and then maybe mentioned something along the lines of like, um, like like Willow and 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 Cornbread because they had those moments right before then, mm-hmm. you know, and all that stuff. Because and 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 Willow was visibly upset when Cornbread had to leave and all right. that. So yeah, maybe maybe, but this just felt it felt forced. It felt like awkward. Like I don't see these two really getting together. Um, but again, you know, they're, I think they're both young and whatever. So maybe, I don't know. It just, so Ryan is 25 at the time of, 
um, filming and Jordis was 21. So they are a few years apart. Eh, we'll see. I don't know. It just felt, again, it felt very, yeah. yeah, meh. And, and, I, and my feeling on it is like, Georges is on a whole different trajectory than Orion is. And so I'm not sure how that would work. Like if they were, if they were more, um, this is, all right, I'm just going to say it. Georges is a rising star. She has a whole career ahead of her. It, like that's, a, that's not in dispute. Orion, on mm-hmm. the other hand, I'm not sure what the story is there. Mm. And and she she is signaling to me that she will be joining a future episode on YouTube of a video on where are they now? These Rue girls who seem to have disappeared, either faded into the limelight or just completely stopped doing drag and mm. went on to do something else. So I'm not really sure what, what her situation is going to be in the future. Her her vibe was giving me, from the, especially from the reunion, I'm here because I have to be here. Like whatever, blah blah blah. I don't take this shit seriously, anyways. You know what I mean? But not like in a, yeah. not in a. Maybe this is all just a game. It was more like I played the game and I don't feel like I got a fair treatment, so I'm I'm being a little sour about it. That's my mm-hmm. take on it. And that's kind of where I agree with you. Like I feel very, like there were moments during the reunion that they were panning over to to Orion and it looked like she was bored. Well, so there's a theory that she was either high or drunk during the reunion um, Mm. because she had difficulty talking a little bit. And so there is a possibility that, you know, those House of Love cocktails were the real deal. um, And like they hit her a little bit, like maybe she had more than one or maybe she had an edible beforehand. I don't know. Mm. Um, Difficult (laughs) to say what that what what girl (laughs) girl. We'll see how that goes, ma'am. Yeah. Oop, you don't feel like that. There we go. What about you? Okay, so um, I have not changed Ooh. my eye rolls. This Ooh. is from. Is this from episode fourteen? I think it's from episode fourteen. Um, what I wrote. I'm about to make one of the most controversial comments probably <laughs> that I've made in some time uh, about something. Um, the moment, uh, so I'm going to talk about an outfit. The moment Uh-oh. I saw this outfit, I was like, the nerve. The nerve you have to wear that outfit on that stage. Are you fucking kidding me? After what we went through this season, and the oh. and the backlash and the criticism and like how someone got sent home because of an outfit and then you have the immitigated gall to turn around and show up in that outfit which is i'm sorry related to the one that got that sent a queen home no oh. ma'am no ma'am no spam no easter ham miss rupaul if zaldi made that Code of many colors bullshit that you wore in that episode. <laughs> Fire the bitch. Get your money back. Don't pay for that outfit. Burn it in effigy. Have a bonfire of the vanities. I don't give a shit. And then turn around and give Miss Maddie Morphosis her due thing. Give her at least a check for 1K. Because that's redunk you list that you wore that outfit. The top does not go with the bottom. It was heinous. I wouldn't even wipe it with my anus. I was so pissed about that. You have no idea. Fuck that shit. Ooh. That is Ooh. one ugly bitch. That's Ooh. all I gotta say about that. Ooh. Is there some water? <laughs> <laughs> you okay over there? Shit. <laughs> I feel like it was in the blast radius of like a, a <laughs> good thing you didn't put no face on girl and I'll be running and melting right. off right now. Like, right. Go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> face in the face. Like Alf. Face off. Just uh I'm sorry. The moment she turned the corner and came up on the screen, I was like, what what is this? What is that? What is that? I'm like, that is ugly. And then the more I looked at it and I realized how similar 
conceptually it was to the one that Maddie went home in, I was like, you have got to be fucking kidding me. And what pisses me off is that Queens had the nerve online to say that is how you do it. Like like they were shaming Maddie for not for not turning that out. And I was like, oh, no, 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 ma'am. Nope. You do not get to say that because I'm sorry. It is ugly. It's like the worst thing I think I've ever seen RuPaul wear. Period. Mm. Period. Mm -mm. That's how I feel about it. So Gary, I'm not worried about it. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna uh, like audition. I'm not trying to get on the show. I have no. <laughs> I am not expecting to have a future with the franchise. Hence, I have an opinion. There's that. Here, so Gary, I mean, when you when when you get a chance, you know, you might want to express your true feelings. Sometimes, I mean, you might want to just let all that out and just like, you know. You're so reserved right now. <laughs> well, I mean, RuPaul even said itself for once. What the fuck are you doing here? I mean, that's how I felt about it the moment she came out on stage. I was like, what? What? What, what is What is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe this. Mama, this is garbage. <laughs> Woo! I'm just saying. Woo, girl. I may not like some things about some outfits that that Zaldi has made and that Rue wears, but that time, no man, nope, nope, nope. Mm -mm. Not happening. Mm -mm. Anything else before we, <laughs> we close out the show? <laughs> Shit. I'm good, mom. I'm good. <laughs> I didn't even have a cocktail. I had no alcohol. Mm -mm. <laughs> so there's that. Um, that being I'm said, done. if you have thoughts and opinions on uh, us this season, oh yes, let's talk about this for a moment. David's pulling out his his chocolate bar. Um, so I will give props for this: the opening of the finale and Rue descends from the ceiling. Yes. I was like, okay. I guess we're going to cut away to show how she's cinched up to not fall or, you know, have an accident or something. I was actually surprised. It appears that she was not, like, strapped or bolted in. She was purely standing like a rock with her hand on the on that knob handle <laughs> and just descended. Now, to be fair, she didn't have a lot of distance to go, but that was, a you know... A safety concern. Mm -hmm. It also echoed back to me to Tu Wong Fu when she descended as racial tension um, in the, you know, Southern Pride uh, Confederate flag sequin dress, which I still think is like one of the best dresses that's been made. But that's only because it was a political statement and not an endorsement. Um so, yeah, I thought that that was very interesting. Um, and then, yes, they were in on the joke. It was so obvious because that Rue's very first words are, it's chocolate. Which she says that and she's fanned by, like, I think it's seven or eight, like, chocolate bar like replicas behind her that make up, you know, the backdrop, this kind of peacock effect or whatever. Um, I also, it was not lost on me that Rue says that. And who says it? A black man dressed as a glamazon drag queen on stage. And I was like, oh, we got that past the censors. <laughs> Fact. Yes. Check. I, 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 I see your move in this chess game. Mm -hmm. World of Wonder Productions. Hat tip to you. Thought that was thought that was kind of fun. Yeah. I need to figure something out real quick. Okay. Cause something's something's bothering me. Do you want okay. me to move on with the No no no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, wait. No, sorry. What? Because I noticed something else. Okay. Remember in the finale when uh, Michelle came on stage. One of the first things Ruth said was, are you going to slap me? Oh, right, right. And 
that was right. They, they decided to make a whole like pop culture contextual like mm-hmm. kind of moment because what they were and referencing I'm... was the Will Smith slap of Chris Rock at the Oscars. Yeah, and and I was like, thinking like, like this kind of was show. That, was that was that was, was did, how did that happen? And then I look and I'm like, oh, the Oscars were on March 27th, 2022, and we know that they recorded. Like April sixth ish around that time, right? So at that point, it had only been it about was... a week and a half. Mm-hmm. But in today's world, so much happens and comes so goes so quickly. It is difficult for something to hold on with longevity that people are still talking about it. So it did feel a little. Um... <laughs> Yeah, because I was it like, was, OK, I mean, I guess it's funny. Not really. It, it wasn't that funny. Yeah. That's let's, 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 let me just call it what it, it wasn't that funny. It just caught me off guard. And I was just like, so how did that happen? And then I realized. The Oscars, the Oscars were not that long ago. Yeah, that was a choice. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was a thing. That was a thing. If you would like to uh, give us your opinions or hot takes on uh, these last episodes, the finale and the winner, uh, there's plenty of ways to do that. You can go to CubsOutloud.com, our website blog, and leave a comment. You can email us at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail message um, at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Um, you can also go to our social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and type in Cubs Out Loud for that. If you would like to join our entourage on Telegram, which is a chat message service. It's very much like Facebook Messenger, but better. Um, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. Um, you can also see when we're going to be recording uh, our episodes if they go live um, mm-hmm. at tinyurl.com backslash calendar dash C-O-L. If you would like to support us, there's several ways to do that. For the merch aspect of things, you can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and get various different items. When it comes to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, we happen to have our uh, lovely logo for Cubs Out Loud with a crown and then pink letters that say Drag Race. A Damon has a lovely uh, baby blue shirt and as well as the um, pink uh, coffee mug. Um, they're they're complimentary. They are. Art. Very trans visibility <laughs> of you, girl. It's supportive. Um, or you could get uh, the consent is my foreplay um, design concept um, from the Smashy collection. This one happens to be in the drag pride colors. Uh, mm. We also have regular Cubs Out Loud items on there as well. You could become a patron. You go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for $1, $5, or $10 per month, you can join us as a patron. And there are various rewards on there. Um, up to and including you get the full episode bookends, the pre and the post shows of the videos. Plus, you get them early if we didn't happen to mention that. Um, they're typically one day before they go out to the rest of the public. Or if you want to just give us a tip. Give the girls some coin. You're more than welcome to. You go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Any denomination will gladly take your, your one-time donation. If Thank you would you. like to promote Cubs Out Loud, uh, you can obviously rate us on iTunes um, and find us on there or Google Play Podcasts. In terms of Cubs Out Loud Drag Race specifically, we have our own RSS feed, so you can uh, get just these episodes if you want to download it to your podcast to listen to. Um and before I forget, there is an All Star Season Seven coming up in a month. Mm-hmm. So Damon and I will be back to discuss the All Winners season. Um, there are many rumors going around and possible spoilers online about what the new All Winners season is going to be like. Um, so that'll be an interesting uh, process for us to discuss these returning queens. Um, and the cast in that. And I want to get into it now, but um, I am excited actually for that. Oh, wow. And that we have, thank God, a couple of weeks before that starts airing. Also true. Because, <laughs> <laughs> girl, it gets real tiring when you spend six solid fucking months doing nothing but, but, but back to back shows. Mm-hmm. That being said, David, if people wanted to get in touch with you, where would they find you? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on most bear related sites are Facebook as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work, but it's a nice little blend of my drag and porn and anime and gaming and porn. Great. 
If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. When it comes to all things drag, I created a separate Twitter handle, which is gearbear 73 d R A G, so they don't get in spoiled. Um, actually, for the finale, uh, I decided not to go to the local bar to watch it because I didn't want to smell like smoke. Um, mm -hmm. So I stayed off of the internet pretty much as much as I could, and then did end up uh, catching it in the middle of the night after it had already aired. Um, so I nice. did not have any spoilers. I was quite happy about that. I watched it live because Jim and I both actually happened to be so. Jim's schedule has changed. Yay for that. Okay. And now we can actually start. We were, we can watch, the, at least for now, we can start watching the show live together. Nice. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to that with um, All Stars uh, because it'll be on Paramount Plus and I'll be able to watch it live over there. So, yay. Mm hmm. With that, uh, we will catch you next time, Hunties. Have Bye. I can finally eat this damn drink. No, no, I... I <laughs>